My name is Caridon Rees and I'm the lead music therapist for Children's Hospice South West. So my role entails um, partly doing some clinical work with the children, so two days a week uh, I spend time in the hospice doing work with the children, whoever is staying with the children or the siblings and, and families and doing group sessions as well if that's appropriate. Um, and then the rest of the time I spend doing workshops and training and supervision and supporting uh, the two music therapists in our other two um, hospices. There is no typical session. You, you can't really say that it takes a particular form. So, so for me, music is one of those amazing things that can cover so many areas. So I tend to just start literally in the middle of my spectrum, if you like, of where the children are. And if they're able to, they can tell me if there's a particular kind of music they might like and they might want to sing along to their favourite pop group or they might want to make up a song about how they're feeling if they have the ability to use words to do that uh, and we can maybe help them play some chords to, to expand on that. That's one end of the spectrum. And then you go all the way through to the other end of the spectrum, which is literally sitting at the bedside of a child who may be very poorly, and just with the beat of a drum or the few strums on the guitar, just offering um, a voice, uh, a support, maybe easing the tension a little bit if, if obviously the, the situation is very fraught and very scary for the parents offering some background music to support that situation. Music for me can do so many things because a lot of people say, I'm not musical, I can't play music. But we're musical beings, we have a heartbeat, which is really the bedrock of all music. So we have a rhythm inside us. And everybody responds to music, whether they choose to or not. Music affects our physicality. It affects the rate of our, our heart, our heart rate. Um, music has a physical impact on us. So if you hear a piece of music, especially if it has a bit of a beat, there is a, there's an, a tendency to want to tap your feet or clap your hands or get up and dance to the music. Music is also a psychological thing. It affects our state of mind. So you can actually use music to support um, the feeling that you've got. So you might, if you're feeling heartbroken, you might put on a piece of music to wallow or you might put on a piece of music to try and um, move you away from that mood if you like and just shift you out of that mood. Music is a social thing as well for me. It's really important here at the hospice. A lot of these children are isolated because they spend huge amounts of time in hospital or at home. They're not able to get to school and be with their friends. Um, and, and also that's isolating for the siblings and the families to a degree. And so music here at the hospice can be a group situation so we can bring everybody together Music is one of those things where it binds people together. Everybody's involved in doing exactly the same thing at exactly the same time. And I think that's one of the most powerful things about it. With a traditional psychotherapeutic intervention, somebody might talk about how, how they're feeling and then the other person would reply. But in music, you're supporting that person at exactly the same moment. And I think that is one of the most powerful things about it. Um, Music also is emotional. I mean, that doesn't really need much explaining. Music can reduce us to tears of joy and sadness in equal measure. And for me, that's where the basis of, of the ability of music to express how we're feeling lies, really. Um, because you can express your deepest emotions. A lot of the children here don't have the English language. They don't have the capacity to say in words how they're feeling, but they can tell me how they're feeling through the way they respond to the music and the way they present themselves, really. There, there are some children that, that I work with who, who you might think might not be able to respond to very much. They, they spend a lot of their time asleep, but bring them into the music room and offer just some gentle guitar playing or some drumming and, and maybe some singing alongside that. And the responses can be literally they can be quite magical they really it really can stimulate these children to respond and it gives them a voice and i don't think there can be a job really that that could be more rewarding than offering someone their voice their ability to actually speak and say something of what they're feeling are you ready are you steady
siblings, just by the very nature of the fact that they have a, a child who's affected um, in some way and, and they're using the, the hospice service, a lot of the, the care and attention has to be paid to that child. And with the best will in the world, the siblings can sometimes really find that they're having to look after themselves. They've got emotions that they don't know how to deal with. And to actually be able to work with those siblings and offer them a space that's one-to-one -one, um, where they can maybe express something of what they're feeling and how they're feeling about the situation. So children obviously respond in so many different ways to music in the same way that, that we do. Um, the ones that, that I find, the sessions that I find particularly rewarding are those where a child maybe doesn't respond to very much. There are no obvious signs of, uh, of response or able to give anything of themselves. And so if you just prepare to spend a little bit of time, and that's, the, that's the, the wonderful privilege that I have, that I can spend time with these children, just strumming on the guitar, maybe playing on the drum, singing, vocalising. And then over time, it might take 20 or 25 minutes, but something of what you're doing is processed by that child. And then maybe their eyes open and they wake up and they maybe start to respond or sing. And that, that really is a wonderful moment for me, but also for the parents to witness. Um, one of the other wonderful things about music is that it, it can make memories. Um, and here at the hospice, that is obviously one of the things that we're trying to do is build some positive memories. So for a parent to be able to have some video of their child in music is, is wonderful for, for them to look back on in the present, but in the future it's incredibly precious for them to have that to look back on. So I do spend quite a lot of my time um, videoing the children in music so that the parents have that to, to look back on. Siblings um, often come to music after their sibling has died and they really obviously have some very big emotions inside them and they have something to express about how they're feeling and what their sister or brother meant to them. And so in music we can maybe create a piece of music, um, we can improvise a piece of music together, we can make up a song together about what their sister or brother meant to them. Or they maybe could sing or play a favourite song of theirs. And quite often that piece of music is then used as part of a funeral service or a memorial service. Um, and that's wonderful because it means that that sibling is able to give something as part of the service. It's their gift to their sibling. My voice is my first instrument because it's the most immediate and it's the most personal instrument that I have. It's me. So I can always respond with my voice. We all are able to do that. If you haven't got words to respond and say how you're feeling, we all do it really. Sometimes if you're rendered speechless, if you're surprised or horrified or um, tearful, you don't use words. You either cry or you shout um, with joy or you, or you scream in horror. So the voice for me is my first instrument. After that, I, I play a little bit of lots of things. So I play a little bit of piano, a little bit of guitar, violin, various instruments really, um, and lots and lots of different kinds of percussion instruments. Um, just because there might be one particular sound that a child responds to. I remember when I was training, there was, um, I read a chapter in a book and this lady had tried every single instrument under the sun, the most sophisticated instruments, uh, and then all the way through to her voice and nothing was, was really evoking any response. And then she tried a little bird whistle and that became the way of communicating with this um, little autistic boy. It was a little bird whistle. I think I've got the best job in the world.